Good evening, everyone. This is Joe for Jaspi's Hobbyland. I'm back in action, feeling better. On a Thursday, the 3rd of May, we are doing a random team break number five of 2018 Bowman Baseball. Big thanks to all of these folks for getting into the action right here, from Tim down to Brad. And as you know, you remember all the different combo teams that we had here. We took out some teams, too. And if any of those teams uh, show up, we'll, uh, one person in the break will, uh, will actually win all those extra cards. Let's randomize, that'll be a different dice roll, but for these two lists right here, six and a two. Six and a two, that's eight times for each list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time, we've got Tyler T uh, down to Rich. And then six and a two, eight times for the teams, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Reds down to the Braves. Uh, yeah, a little bit later tonight we'll have pick your teams for that, John. All right. So Tyler, you have the Reds, EA with the White Sox. Jeremy told me you got the A's. Brad with the Giants, Mets, Royals, and Brewers combo, Giuseppe with the Nationals, Darren with the Twins, Sherry with the Cardinals, Tyler T with my Dodgers, Jeremy with the Blue Jays, Josh with the Orioles, uh, Dave Banos, you have the Angels, nice, Brad Davis, Last Bot Mojo, Marlins and Pirates, Tim with the Yankees, Tyler T with the Phillies, Rich with the Rays, Sherry got the Diamondbacks, Astros combo, EA with the Rockies, Padres for Anthony, Jeremy Tillman with the Red Sox, Jeremy Merle with the Cubs, and Rich with the Atlanta Braves. So let's sort this list by team. And feel free to trade, folks. Any trades? the chat doesn't seem like they're like thank you Jen by the way um, and Michael house I am I'm alive feeling better I was on the DL for a couple days but I'm back in action Sean with a very cheeky 20 bucks for the angels offer hey it's worth a shot it's worth a shot All right, doesn't look like there's gonna be any trade, so let's rock and roll. Let's put grids all around these things. Let's print this baby out. Let's get going, folks. Settle in. It's gonna be a long break. But this is a nice, uh, let's stretch out my, my break in hands, too. A couple days off. All right. So this is going to take a minute or two, but real kick back, relax. There is our final list, same as the first screen that you saw. There's everybody. It's official now. It's officially on the on the printout. Um, our Otani auto. I saw. I think saw someone ask about that. Our, our Otani autograph count is still at two. And it was the same two autographs that came out of the same case, which is crazy. We'll save this poster for a future giveaway. I think we're going to put one up in the store, have we? All right, good luck everybody. One autograph per box is what we're looking for. Let's see what we got. Jesse O, not, not wearing a hat. You know, I usually only wear hats when uh, when I am, when my hair is just out of control. Just haven't had a haircut. So, you know, I don't fuss about my hair that much. So, so usually when it gets too long, I'm just like, uh, I just like delay getting the haircut. 
That's when I usually end up wearing a lot of hats. But but yeah, that's usually when the hat happens. So there, it's usually a, a, a two or three month cycle. Jesse, and maybe in a couple of months, you'll start to see me wear hats more. Although it is, then it becomes summertime. And usually I don't let my hair grow out that long in the summer. It gets too hot. I don't know how girl, ladies, I know Jen Hunt was in the room. Girls, how do you deal with a big mop of hair on your head during the summer? How does that, how does that work? Jackie, how does that work? <laughs> you can't stand it. Yeah, in the summertime, it must be... If it's bad enough here in Southern California, in areas that are like super humid and whatnot, or maybe maybe all the all, all the ladies just keep their all the women just keep their hair cut shorter in the summertime in like humid areas. You would have to, right? And what if you have curly hair? That humidity must be your hair must go all over the place. Man, <laughs> Jen, would you would you consider just shaving your entire head? The bald just doesn't look good, says Jen. Although comfort-wise, that's right, folks. If you're just joining us, you get you get baseball talk and you get hair talk on Jaspie's Hobbyland. That's just showing off our versatility in this entertainment space. You could be watching baseball games on Facebook. Entertainment options are huge. There's just way too many now. But I appreciate everybody choosing us. All right, I see some orange shimmer in there too. Obviously, the paper doesn't ship. Did I click the wrong? There you go. <laughs> click the wrong button. All right, there's the list again. All right. Here we go. Start with, let's move this paper aside here. We'll save the chrome. And we've got a gold Francisco Lindor, 16 out of 50. Gold paper for the tribe. That goes to, who has the Indians? Oh, we, I don't think we sold the Indians. So this actually goes into our, uh, this actually goes into our, Randomized to one person in the break pile. So we'll breeze through this paper. Verdugo in action with the Dodgers. 109 out of 2, 150 is Justin Dunn. That goes to uh, the Mets, Brad Davis with the Mets. Actually, you know what? Just in the interest of time, we're not going to top load all the numbered cards. This break will take a little bit long enough anyway. Wow, there it is. Orange Shimmer is an autograph. Logan Allen. Obviously, autographs will get top loaded up right away. Anthony with the Friars. Nice, 21 out of 25. Nice way to start the day. Got some Atomic, Pedro Avila. little stack here. We'll save these Otani papers, of course, for the Angels. Stack here. Mm -hmm. 
There's only one autograph per box, so let's see if we can find any, maybe another low numbered parallel before we move on to the next box. Maybe, maybe some more. Is that look? Maybe some more orange back there. Yes, Pedro Avila. So it's a Padres box. One out of twenty-five. Nice orange. Out of twenty-fives and under, I will top load right away. Padres going to Anthony. Anthony with a couple oranges coming out of the box. Nice. All right, so next box coming up. This will save for the randomizer. I'll try to do these quick uh, autograph recaps at the end of every box so you know what we had. So if you're watching the replay on YouTube, generally for these longer breaks, you can fast forward through them and the hits at the end of each box. All right, so uh, we added a few new things to the website, folks. So if you're just joining us, I'm back. I'm alive. Welcome back. It's good to be back. JaspiesHobbyland.com. We've got a nine box mixer. On the uh, on the site right now, we've got National Treasures football uh, back on the site. We've got more uh, for hockey fans. We've got more Upper Deck Ice on the site. We have plenty of that Prism World Cup soccer, which is coming upon us soon. We've got random teams for uh, National Treasures basketball. That'll be out tomorrow. We'll have picture teams posted later tonight. We've got Chronicles basketball as well, hoops fans. The Pick Your Team break just sold out of Bowman Baseball, so we'll get to that shortly after this break. And then we'll keep moving on from there. And that is our that Pick Your Team that just sold out, I believe is our last one for the for the time being. Bossman was mentioning that the prices on those cases have gone up significantly. So we've been still do, we've still been getting them at decent prices though. But other other guys selling it for a lot. All right, so there's a lot of stuff on the site on jazzhobbyland.com, and we've got National Treasures basketball new release tomorrow. I think encased basketball was supposed to come out yesterday, folks, but that was pushed back till uh, for another few months. All right, next box. See ya. All right, next one. Got DL Hall out of four ninety nine. That's for the Orioles. That'll go to Josh Pruce with that one. Chris Archer out of one fifty. Double O eight out of one fifty. Going to the Rays. That'll be for Rich. Um, the I think that Bounty Hunter mixer number two we took off the site, Patrick. Nobody wanted to win money, so we'll say we'll we'll save that for another rainy day. Two thirty-five out of four ninety-nine. Logan Allen for the Padres. Anthony with another one. Uh, dudes asking, never instead on paper. What is the what is the first Bowman mean? That's I. It's literally their first card, or the first time they've been in a Bowman product is what that means.
And Mackenzie Mills is your autograph. Purple Chrome going to Tyler T and the Phillies. Tyler T with the fighting fills. That is 86 out of 250. There's your autograph for the box. And now on the search for some parallels. Low numbers, preferably. I always want low numbers. Um, the purpose of the chrome, yeah, the purpose of the chrome is literally just for extra value, exactly. And obviously there is not as many, you know, there is extra value because there's just not as much chrome as there is paper, as you can see. Believe it or not, there is a, um, there is, is a lot of people go, well, why doesn't Topps just get rid of the paper? They could reduce the paper a little bit, but there are people who still, still collect paper base from year to year. And obviously, Otani's only paper. But it's kind of surprising because I, 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 th I, I think the argument is always like, oh, well, no one wants paper base, right? Everyone says nobody wants paper base. That's not true, though. That's, if no one really, if people didn't really want paper base, they wouldn't do it. But there's enough people that still want paper base. I think mo mostly, uh, there there are still a lot of people who collect Bowman every year that build sets of the paper base. It's been a thing. So that's what they do. Now, for most case breaking operations, I think most people who are into this. Numbers have shown that they're not as interested in the paper base, and from a from a shipping perspective becomes kind of difficult timing perspective. That's why we don't end up shipping the paper base, we end up donating them. There's our autograph. But there are a lot of people who still like it. Enough people that still like it. But I think that's always a that's always a debate. I think at like industry conferences and and stuff like that, there's a distinct younger generation of kids who are just like that paper base is, base is worthless. You know what I mean? And then there's like an older generation who still still own older guys who still own the the the, the hobby shop in town kind of thing. Where it's just like you young whippersnappers don't know what you're talking about. People still come to the store to buy boxes of hobby for the chrome and the paper base. A lot of people still build sets out of that, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of people do. It's just a, it's just a thing. Yeah, that's it is. You're right. It's like Dave, Dave Balance is right. That's like the hobby part of it. But then a lot of the younger case breakers are at these, are just like, oh, well, it's such a hassle to open up all this paper base and blah blah. blah. So that's that's where that sort of divide, that generational divide, comes in. Nick Jaspi and I are kind of kind of stuck in the middle because we are that sort of younger generation, but I think we also appreciate, I think, you know, especially with the boss man being the hobby for so long, we have that appreciation of of why this exists. You know what I mean? They could still print a little less paper though. <laughs> That's what I think, Tops. So if you're listening, just a little bit less. Just a little bit less. Right, that's true too. Yeah, Rich, you're right. People who, who get autographs in person will often use the paper version of this to get to, for autographs. A lot of collectors that do that. That's absolutely true. You know, and the paper base is also a great way for like, if you have young kids, a great way for them to start playing with cards and start appreciating that without giving them your nice stuff. <laughs> So it's something you could share with your kids without spending too much, and then you're just like, oh, if your kid's an if your kid's a Carlos Correa fan, you know, and he's like six, he or she is like six or seven years old, you just have him play with this paper right here, and ta-da, have that appreciation of of the hobby grow, especially 
especially in a digital world where you find so few things that are tangible anymore. This is a cool way to introduce your kids to something tangible. Helps grow the hobby. Our autograph is right on top. TJ, this is box like three now. How many autographs do we have? One, two, yeah, this is, we're on the third box. This is our third autograph right here. And it's Luis Escobar for the Pirates. Who's got the Buckos? That's the Marlins Pirates. That's Last Spot Mojo, Brad Davis. There you go. Not numbered, but the autograph going to you. And then we're looking for just more parallels now, especially the orange ones, like those orange parallels. Dwayne Smith says, I'll give you a dollar for pirate space. Then I'll have to give pirate space to the next person who gives me a dollar, and the next person, and the next person. And the next thing you know, <laughs> we're sorting out paper base. And that's exactly what we didn't want to do. So no, sorry. It's really a logistics thing for us. It just takes too long. Oh no, yeah, sorry, T. It's not this is the hobby. It, it, it turns out uh, the hobby had filled first a couple days ago, whilst I was on my deathbed, and um, I really, I really wasn't dying. But someone's gonna call me and be like, "You guys, you were really dying." It's a figure of speech. 70 out of 150, blue shimmer for the O's. That's DJ Stewart. So they have a DL Hall and a DJ Stewart. Uh, Orioles, Josh Pruce. Just letting, just fun fact. There's Otani, some paper. All that paper will ship, of course. All the other guys aren't as special as that. How much for all the paper base, Dwayne Smith? I don't think you were paying attention. Dwayne, the answer is they're not for sale. <laughs> no, wait, for you? 90 bucks. I'll say I'll I'll personally sort out pirate space for you for a hundred dollars. Twenty-five out of fifty, Andres Jimenez. The man with the best autograph in the hobby at the moment. I'm sure we'll see it soon. That gold card going to Brad Davis. Now someone's going to complain in a message board. Can you believe Jaspies is charging $100 for Pirates Paper Base? What jerks? That, that'll be the next thread in Blowout. The big forums there. Jaspies charging 100 bucks for Pirates Paper Base. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. What a ripoff. Bad for the hobby. Jaspie single-handedly ruining the hobby. That's what we'll get. <laughs> Can't keep the internet happy, folks. Especially, especially when people don't get a joke. All right. Folks, what what was what was happening in baseball while while I was dead to the world? Did anybody anything amazing happen? I know that the Dodgers lost Hyunjin Ryu. I was kind of half asleep watching that game, and I know thought I was dreaming. I thought there couldn't possibly be another major injury to a Dodgers starter, especially since Hyunjin Ryu has been one of the best pitchers for the Dodgers in an otherwise somewhat disappointing Dodgers season. That possibly couldn't happen, uh, but it's true. Did happen. Looks, looks like keep your uh, keep your Walker Bueller autographs out. Looks like he'll be he'll be up for a little while longer. The Dodgers did win today, five two. 
Kansas City beat the Tigers 10-6. Yankees edging out the Astros. I think they won that series. Yankees edging out the Astros 6-5. Uh, Braves shutting out the Mets 11-0. I think the Braves still may be the leaders in runs for the National League, at least. Nationals beating the uh, Pirates 3-1. We still have a bunch of games still left in progress. I think in Game 1... Oh, they don't want this. In Game 1 of a doubleheader, it's an extra innings. Although it looks like... Looks like uh, the Blue Jays are going to take this one. They're they're up thirteen to nine over the uh, Indians, but the Indians still have the bottom of the eleventh for them. But you don't want extra innings during a during a doubleheader day. And make up for all the all those weather games earlier. A lot of teams have weird have weird one uh, weird Monday games too coming up. What's up, Ed Ram? <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's it's really just a, it's really just sleep and orange juice, tea, honey, just a lot of rest. I think that usually knocks it out. Really, it's really mostly in the throat that put me on the DL. Oh, Spencer Howard. I think just last three box have been Pennsylvania autographs. One from Pittsburgh and a couple from Philadelphia. Spencer Howard going to Tyler T. His Bowman's first autograph. Round two from last year. So now parallel hunting. Marcus Stroman had a nice start yesterday. He's on my fantasy team. Had a nice... Uh, Start yesterday. My buddy was telling me who I co own the fantasy team with. Um, boss man's oldest, actually. And we he was he was telling me Marcus Stroman had gave up on his on his cut fastball. Or for some reason hasn't been throwing it. But then he started throwing it and now is playing really well. <laughs> it's like why would you do that? Why did you do that? Let's take a pitch that worked well for me and not use it. It was very odd. He had a really rough start to the season, too. Ryan Vallad, 99 out of 4, 99 for the Rockies. That'll be going to EA. I always think why pitchers would do that. Maybe it's a certain grip. Maybe they think it's not or They've lost confidence in it or something like that or trying something new. I don't know what the case is, but hopefully he'll keep using it. If you look at all those advanced statistics, like FIP, FIP, XFIP, those numbers were looking pretty okay for Stroman. But the actual ERA was just not looking good at all. So there had to be some sort of regression or progression for him, I guess, in that case. Hopefully that continues. Chris Rodriguez to 250. That's for the Angels. David Banos with that one. There's Vlad again. So, um, well, let me know, folks. Whoever's listening right now, what is, who, who's your baseball team? And after, well, we're in early May now, after a first solid month of the season, what, what does everyone think where their ball club is at? For me, I don't know. This, this might not be the year for the Dodgers unless they turn something around really quickly. But a lot of injuries kind of piling up. They got Puig's on the DL. I think Matt Kemp is not on the DL, but I think has like a little bit of an injury. You know, Justin Turner still on the DL, Logan Forsyth on the DL, uh, Hyunjin Ru, bad growing strain probably, or hamstring, hammy, something around there, probably going on the DL. 
things aren't clicking for the Dodgers right now. So I think that might be sort of part of that World Series hangover. It's hard to get back to the World Series two, in your, two years in a row. Look at what the Cubs faced a similar thing the year after they won the World Series. There's Dylan Cousins and a 499 for the Phillies. So, uh, hey, listen, if it's if I have to take a year, one step back to take a couple steps forward, I'll accept that. That's what makes baseball so hard. Jesse O saying that the Twins have decided that winning isn't important anymore. Man, I, I thought the Twins were going to have a... Let's take a quick look at the standings here. I thought the Twins were going to have a nice season this year. You know, they, they have a young team. Young team with a lot of offense. They had the highest scoring offense in the second half of last season. And all they need to do is shore up some pitching. And I feel like they got a couple of competent starters on there. They got Lance Lynn, right? And I think Odorizzi. I feel like they addressed starting pitching issues. It just hasn't clicked for them either. Hi, Jokey. Um, yeah, we're still at two. That Those two base autographs, non-numbered base autographs from that one jumbo case like ages ago. That came out of one case. Oh, boss man, did 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 he did Giuseppe come by to pick up those? Yes, he did. Well, I'm sure he was excited. I had a picture for him. Oh, nice. He was happy. I'm sure he was happy too. Yeah. He he was just like I, he was like I was happy to get the angels in the spot random, and then I was happy just to get one autograph, yeah. let alone two. Insane. Some guys have all the luck. He I don't think. I know, seriously, play your lottery at that point. Anyway, so he, so, so the winner, Jokey and everybody, uh, was a local guy too. Where is he from? Uh, Did he say? San Bernardino. Oh, he's all the way out in San Bernardino. Okay. So local, quasi local. He still has to drive for a little while, but I think it was worth it. But yeah, he got to pick it up. So those are th those are the only ones. Those are the only ones. We have not seen... Well, we did get an Otani. This was actually kind of exciting. We did get an Otani. Remember that sort of cyan border one that was out of four ninety nine? We got one of those. And that actually was going for like 100 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. So we got a, we finally got our first parallel. But otherwise, just paper. Usually like one every other box or one per box or one every other box. So, yeah, I mean, I, obviously I've been blocking that from my memory, Dave Banos. Corey Seager going down for the entire season with Tommy John surgery. Yeah, that I, that I saw. That, that, I, that probably didn't put me in a, a deeper state of malaise. <laughs> there, was a, there, there was a lot of... Angry fists being shaken up to God. Why? What have I done? I've been a good baseball fan. So, yeah. So, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't think the Dodgers are going to do much. Like, they're not going to go out and get Machado or anything like that. I think they're just going to wait for those guys to hit free agency. That guy may be Bryce Harper, Manny Machado. And then they're just going to kind of take a step back to, to take a couple steps forward. This is a brutal postseason for the Dodgers. It was, a, it was a long and hard battle to get to the very, very end of the World Series. It'll get some teams. It happened to, happened to the Cubs, too. It happens to a lot of teams. There's Jaron Kendall, part of the Dodge future, 10 out of 25. That'll go to my Dodgers. Tyler got randomized the Dodgers. But it's weird. I think I, I, I think this is why this is why you play the games, right? All the teams you expected to to be this or that are not quite there. And some unexpected teams playing extremely well. Ozzy Albius right here. 25 out of 25.
playing extremely well. I wonder. That's a nice, nice hit for the for Rich, and the Braves. I think once Ronald Acuna got got called up, everyone forgot about how well this guy, how well this guy was doing. He's still hitting, still playing well. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he edges out Acuna in Rookie of the Year voting. It's it's very possible. There may be some advanced stats that kind of give Ozzy Albius the edge. So we still haven't seen our autograph yet, but a couple nice orange parallels. Still looking for the auto from this box. Oh, and it's Chrome Prospect Autograph Luis Robert. That's a big name for the White Sox. EA with the White Sox. I think EA's been looking for this guy. He's been selling pretty well in the uh, in the hobby. Robert Rohr is asking, is he any good? Well, Robert, you can check out my 2018 Bowman Baseball Guide that I've been working on. Uh, if you click on the bottom tab of that spreadsheet, it'll be the 2018 Bowman Baseball Guide. And he, he is a pretty big name for the White Sox. Excuse me a second. Yeah, well, the important thing to note is that he is, he's 21. He's, uh, his organizational rank in the White Sox is third, according to Fangraphs. And Fangraphs also has him 21st overall. He's in high A ball right now. But it's supposed to be a big, uh, a big outfield prospect for them. Center field says Banos. I know that he is also also selling pretty well as well. Fangraphs has ex his expected debut is about 2020. So a couple years from now, he should be maybe getting that cup of coffee. And then starting to make his way into the everyday lineup if, our, if everything progresses as well as, well as it should. Uh, Luis Robert was hit. Yeah, Victor Robles should be really good. He's supposed to be the real deal, Victor Robles, and he's supposed to be called up this season. I think the Nationals should call him up at some point this season. 14 out of 125, Colby Allard for the Bravos. Next box. Yeah, Joe P saying that's about a that Robert is about a hundred dollar hit, hundred fifty dollar hit that is. Yeah, that should that should cover should easily cover this random team spot and then some. Probably more, says Rory. That's a pretty one, pretty good one to get.
All right. Well, just going down the standings really quick, now that we've got about a month of baseball under our belts. Red Sox, 22-8. and eight. 22 and 8, one and a half games ahead of the Yankees for 21 and 10. That should be a pretty that should be a pretty classic rivalry battle going down the stretch in that AL East. I can see them switching first and second pretty much all season long. I really don't know who's going to who's going to get first. They're going to be first or second, but I don't know who's going to get it. So that'll be pretty exciting. The Blue Jays are uh, hanging in there at 17 and 13. They're five games back. They've actually been playing pretty well. Tampa Bay at 13 and 16, also playing better than expected, but I don't think they're expected to get anywhere close to this. Uh, Orioles, eight for 22, or eight and 22, 14 games back. Uh, again, I don't think they're gonna move Machado at the trading deadline. They should though, but I think they're gonna ask for a, they're gonna ask for a king's ransom. I think. So who will be who will be willing to pay that? I mean, Dodgers maybe. I don't know. They're, they're traditionally not not ones to give up the farm, literally. I, I think they're more willing to pay money than give up the farm, which I think they will do. But that'll be an interesting thing. Mookie Betts for MVP has been playing well. But I think people forget how close Mookie Betts got to actually winning the MVP a couple years ago. Uh, we were just talking about that earlier, Jose. Do do I think the Dodgers can turn the season around with all those injuries? With all the injuries? Well, I, I think the Dodgers are struggling already before all these injuries, but no Corey Seager for the rest of the season. You know, even though he didn't have a good start to the season, you can always attribute that to that elbow. So Corey Seager not 100%. Hyunjin Rue now on the DL, who is the Dodgers' best pitcher this season, statistically. And he had a he's had a first good couple innings in that Diamondbacks game too, but um, I think they could be I think they could be a playoff team, but I think it'll be difficult. I think it would be more about I think it'd be more about other teams kind of slumping than it would be more than the Dodgers being able to turn it around. Dodgers have so much depth that I think they can always keep within striking distance, but I think they're going to need a little help from other teams not playing well or slumping in the middle of the season or something like that. The crazy thing is I, there's still a lot of time left in the season, so I mean you, you can't really write anybody off yet, especially with a team that has a lot of injuries. There's Fernando Tatis Jr., that's a big name in the hobby. 25 out of 25. That's a big one for Anthony and the Padres. Turner coming back should definitely help. And I think it's really up to the young guys to step up too. I mean, you know, I don't think the Dodgers want to rely on Walker Bueller pitching all that often, but he may now have to. There's James Nielsen, 125. Alex Verdugo, I don't think, is projected to be as big of a superstar as, say, Corey Seager or Cody Bellinger, but I, th I think he's going to have to kind of step up and have a pseudo sort of rookie of the year type campaign to kind of keep the Dodgers afloat. Rich Hill should be coming back too. That, sh that should, a healthy Rich Hill should help. Huh? I mean, next man up, right? That's kind of what it is. Whoa! Four out of five, Ahmed Rosario. 2018 Rookie of the Year favorites. I saw a little bit of that red peeking out. I didn't think it was going to be an autograph. Brad Davis with the Mets. Wow. He's playing well too, Ahmed Rosario. He He's certainly a Rookie of the Year favorite. I could see that. Him and the guys on the Braves. That is strong. Um, Brad Davis, out of fives and under, our first train whistle of the week. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Boom. Mets started out the season really hot, too. All 
right. Going back to the standings really quick, um, going to the AL Central, Indians are doing what they usually do. They're 16 and 13. That AL Central is kind of a mess. After, after the Indians, everybody else is under 500. Well under 500. Tigers are 13 and 17. Minnesota's 10 and 16. White Sox only have eight wins. Kansas City only has nine wins. Maybe the, I don't think the wild card is coming out of that division, at least for now. We got Aaron Althier out of 499 for the Phillies. That'll go to Tyler T. There's Otani. There's some chrome. And the rest, that was a nice box, ladies and gentlemen. Orange Fernando Tatis and the out of five autograph of Ahmed Rosario. Pretty solid. Got your Alvarez out of 250 for my Dodgers. Guys like him, I think, are still a year or two, a couple years away. The next sort of selection of big prospects. Yeah, Verdugo's had a pretty pretty nice start to his career. I think with the injuries, might might pave his way to perhaps an everyday job. All right, so nice out of five, Ahmed Rosario, and nice orange Fernando Tatis Jr. All right, we are uh, officially halfway through this break, folks. Got to pick up the pace a little bit here, but nice break so far. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if Kershaw's been carrying an injury too. Uh, his, his bat his he's got lower back issues, so that can always can always crop up. Uh, AL West, just kind of going through division by division. AL West, Astros are 20 and 13. Great season for them, obviously. Angels at 18 and 12. They've had a great season thus far. And it's kind of crazy because the, the the Mariners aren't too far, or just half a game behind them, 17 and 12. Half a game behind the Angels, that is. And even Oakland playing well. They, they're, they're 15 and 15. Ichiro retired. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I heard. Ichiro retired, huh? That's crazy. That's first ballot Hall of Famer, right, Ichiro? The Rangers at 12 and 20. I think they're definitely taking a step back, letting some young. They've got a decent farm system, I think, Rangers. They're going to let some of those guys get another year of seasoning under their belts. What it, TJ saying you should see what Yadier Alvarez, but what does he drive? What does he drive around the streets of Tulsa? Can you drive a McLaren? Must have been a nice signing bonus. That's got to be weird, uh, especially on the minor league level, when you got guys with like the big, you know, the big signing bonuses. You know, and they're the guys driving McLarens, right? And then you got guys that are just like, yeah, I got drafted in the eighth round. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to grind out of, trying to grind out a decent baseball career. It's crazy. You got, and you're right next to each other. That's that's where the coaches get their money, folks. Bring guys like that together. 
Same cause. MJ Melendez out of 499, the future Salvador Perez for the Royals. That goes to Brad Davis. Try to move a little more quickly now in the interest of time. Just get this around the same mark that it usually takes me. And our autograph up here is Harrison Bader. Nice. Rookie auto for the Redbirds. That goes to Sherry with the Cardinals. Is he having a good season? I don't know. I know he's playing mostly every day, right? Cardinals fans, let me know. We pulled that Harrison Bader uh, Super Fractor, that Rookie of the Year favorite Super Fractor, which is pretty amazing. There's Nomar Mazzara at a 250 purple paper for the Rangers, although I don't think the Rangers are on this list. Yeah, the Rangers are not on this list. So these guys will go into that lot right here. We'll randomize it as a lot winner take all on those bonus cards. Juan Soto for the Nationals goes to Giuseppe. Uh, Giuseppe. Out of 250 on the Juan Soto. I'll set that alongside with that Tani. DL Hall. these uh, Bowman Sterling inserts too. Those were those obviously shipped to you. Some of them are numbered. Some of them are even autographed, which are pretty cool. All right, next box. Harrison Bader was our autograph for the Cardinals. Some parallels. Going to the NL really quick, the uh, Braves, 19 and 11. What a start for the Braves. Is this it? The Braves set? Everyone thought they were like, what, two years away. Maybe, maybe the time is now. I feel like there's usually, I'm trying to think, the Astros are sort of the same way, right? There were like a couple years ago where the Astros seemed to be like, Right there. You know, they surprised a lot of people. They won a lot of games. Kind of took a smaller step back, I think, maybe the next season. And then next thing you know, they're winning the World Series. That uh, could be the Braves' sort of trajectory at this point. Uh, Freddie Freeman anchoring that lineup there. If everybody's healthy, all the young players do what they need to do. It's pretty impressive. 
what's their big pitching maybe could be an issue. I don't know. They 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 won't they've won nineteen games. They're not can't be can't be too many can't be too many issues when you're when you're winning nineteen games, right? And you're hitting the way they're hitting. Uh, the Mets are still there, seventeen and twelve. They cooled off a little bit, especially against the Braves. But they've cooled off a little bit. But they're still seventeen and twelve. Phillies are playing good baseball, seventeen and thirteen. And now, the Nationals, who started off the season slow, like my Dodgers, they rattle off a five-game winning streak. They're they're now five hundred, sixteen and sixteen, only four games behind the uh, the Braves. So that could be a wild finish to the uh, AL or to the NL East. I guess, I guess it really just depends on, you know, which young team, Phillies or the Braves, will cool off first. And then, you know, you'll see if the Mets pitching staff can stay healthy. And, the, you know, and if all, all things are equal, you would think the Nationals would be right in for the, for the division as well. No, how many walks does Harper have? Well, he'll usually have, oh, it doesn't say. No, it doesn't have on-base percentage. How many walks does he have? A lot? He has 40 walks? How many plate appearances does he have now? Compared to how many strikeouts? Like, what's his walk-to-strikeout ratio? It must be insane, then. And he, only, he had 68 all of last year. We got DJ Stewart Orange Shimmer, 25 out of 25. That's another nice one for Josh Proust and the Orioles. Uh, Dave Bonas, it's almost it's almost as if Bryce Harper is in a contract year. That couldn't possibly be it. Adrian Morohone out of 499 for the Padres. That'll go to Anthony. Well, it's almost as if he's in a contract year. No, but he, he would always display that, right? Every player would. Every player. See, that just that's just kind of has to annoy you a little bit. You're like, we know you can. <laughs> You know he can do that, Bryce Harper. It's almost like it's like guys in the NBA who will play like great defense for like a quarter, and you're like, "Hey, where was that?" I'll see. We know you can play defense. You just you're just choosing not to. Out of four ninety nine, Ahmed Rosario. Like, wait a second, James Harden. We know you can play defense. You're just choosing not to. Next auto coming up. And it's going to be for the Yankees. It's Matt Sig Sour. That goes to the Whiskey Sour going to Tim Haynes and the Bronx Bombers. 15 out of one uh, out of 15 out of 499, that is. Nice refractor autograph for the Yankees. Yes, oh, he has 39 walks. I mean, put, that's splitting hairs. He's got a lot of walks. I think was Dave Bonos's point. He's got a lot of walks. It's clear that he's in a contract year. How much do you guys think is uh, is Bryce Harper going to make? Because I think all that talk about oh, uh, free agent contracts are. Are, are down. People aren't paying guys like they like they used to. You know, blah blah blah. I don't think that applies to superstars of uh, of the level of like Bryce Harper or Manny Machado. So like, so all that being said, how much does he? How much does he get? Oh, he's pitching right now. TJ, tell tell him tell him we might need him in that in the bullpen. Tell him to hurry up. And how well? How many years, Andrew Case? Four hundred million, four hundred million, ten years, I guess. I guess it'd be crazy if it was under ten years. Hi, Nino. What's going on, man? Yeah, I am back in action. Slowly getting myself back into into shape here, into breaking shape.
Harper's no Joe Maurer, says Jesse O. There's CJ Chatham, Chatham. 143 out of 150 for the Red Sox. That'll go out to Jeremy Tillman. We've got randomized the Bo Sox. And next box. Well, St David Bonos is suggesting, well, Stan got 325, but we knew Miami wouldn't be paying the whole thing. got to be at least at least 350 and there's got to be opt outs too you know there's going to be opt outs there's no way any no one's going to be on the hook for 10 years you know no one's going to be on the hook for 10 years and however much millions of dollars there's going to be player opt outs and club opt outs there has to be I can't imagine in this day and age anyone fully guaranteeing all those years. So, uh, it's going to be crazy. Machado, too. Machado's going to get paid a lot as well. Um, moving to the. Uh, NL Central really quick. Brewers on top of the NL Central at 19 and 13. With the Cardinals just behind them, 17 and 12. And the Cubs just behind them, 16 and 12. And the Pirates just beyond that, 17 and 15. There's two games separating four teams. Milwaukee, Cardinals, the Brewers, the Cardinals, the Cubs, and the Pirates. That's going to be a fight to the finish as well. Are the Pirates for real? I know the Cubs have been under underperforming a little bit. But are the Pirates for real? Maybe. And the Reds, poor Reds, 7 and 24. They've got a good farm system, though. I think their farm system is probably further ahead than, say, the Marlins' farm system, right? So I think, I think that they're, I think the Reds might be in a little bit better shape the next three to five seasons than maybe the Marlins are at the moment. Uh, Diamondbacks have yet to cool off. They're 21 and 10. Rockies playing well, 17 and 15. Uh, Giants, 16 and 15. Game ahead of 500. And the Dodgers, with a with a modest two-game winning streak, they're up to 14 and 17 now. Just a couple games and a half ahead of the Padres, who are 11 and 21, almost the exact reverse record of the Diamondbacks. Ooh, boombox. Saying that breaks <laughs> that Matt Ryan contract that Andrew K mentioned breaks down to approximately four million dollars per point of the Super Bowl lead he blew. That's not his fault though, is it? That's that, that's got to be the coaches playing it too safe. Jose still thinks that, uh, that that the old Dodgers will still win the division. Well, they'll have to heat up, really. I mean, it's they it, they're a team that's capable of it. They showed it last year. They could they could heat up really fast. They can cool down really fast too. But if they put together a hot a hot couple months of the season like they did last year, yeah, anything's possible. I think it's just not going to be as easy this season. Not nearly as easy. Um, I'll allow I'll allow a little football talk during this baseball race. It's a long break anyway. Um, Andrew K. wondering, will Gruden last uh, the, for the tenure of his contract? How many years? Oh, he's got. Uh, yeah, I mean, if he if he wins, it's kind of hard to predict that. My assumption is yes, he will last the entire 
uh, entire tenure of his contract because he's going to win. He has to win. At a 250, Luis Garcia. That goes to the Phillies. The only way he, would, he he doesn't fill out the tenure of his contract, if he wins like, if like four years into his contract, he wins like three Super Bowls in a row, and then he'll be like, yeah, what's what else is there left to prove? I'll just, I'm, time for me to retire. I've accomplished everything I need to accomplish in the NFL. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to, I'll go back to the broadcasting booth or I'll, I'll become a part owner of the Raiders or something like that, which I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll get actually, I think, or you might actually have that already. It is going to be weird seeing, yeah, Las Vegas Raiders. Although, if the Vegas Golden Knights season is of any indication, there's Tuki Toussaint out of 125. that will go to the Braves. Uh, Rich with that one. If the Vegas Golden Knights are of any indication, I'll gladly take whatever Vegas flu is happening when teams come into town. Knights, ho Knights home record was fantastic. Uh, Paul Hutchins, tough strict match or laid back match with a generation player? Uh, that's a good question. I think that's one of the biggest things, right? What does, how does Gruden manage in this day and age? 10 out of 50, gold, Brandon McKay. Two-way player, Brandon McKay. They might keep him a two-way player, Rich. Unlike Hunter Green, who I think they're going to shift to pitching. Um... I think John Gruden will be able to manage. I mean, what's what's good management? Good management is being able to to uh, to be both strict when you need to be and laid back when you need to be. You have to know your players, and I think John Gruden has had a lot of interaction with players. And coaches throughout the year while he's been broadcasting and everything. So you got to think he's okay there. Studied footballs, stud knows knows tactics, you know. So it's not like he was just taking a break for ten years and then came back. Uh, Sandro Fabian is your autograph. Oppo Joe Mojo for Brad Davis and the Giants. I think John Gruden will be fine. I think he'll be. I think he'll be fine. But listen, I, th I think when he, people have to remember when he left the league. Uh, it's not like he was like Vince Lombardi, you know what I mean. So let's let's not let's not fool ourselves too much there. You know, it's not like he's like Phil Jackson of football. You know, Gruden had his had his struggles as well. It's just a matter of whether he has either improved upon those or have found staff members, assistant coaches who can cover up for whatever weaknesses that he surely knows that he has. So it's not like he's he's like this genius. He's just a big personality, which is great. It's great for the league, but he still has to win football games. So Tyler Kish, what's going on? Oh, uh, did something happen between him and Reggie McKenzie? That I did not know. I know that I know that Reggie McKenzie's son, Kyle McKenzie, I think, was was drafted or, or signed as a free undrafted free agent by uh, by the Chiefs or something like that. I know Charles Woodson was joking around and talking a little trash with Reggie McKenzie. Yeah, Jose saying with, with with Derek Carr getting some uh, some weapons, that's gotta be that's gotta be helpful. Jordy Nelson, I, I think uh, you know people who watch the stream long enough know about the uh, about the bit of the the dropsies that that Amari Cooper has, even Michael Crabtree too. Nel uh, Jordy Nelson's much more of a solid pass catcher, has better hands. That's gonna be key. I don't know. We'll see how the draft, how all those. It's really defense. They got to shore up on that defense and protect Eric Carr. And that's it. Jeff Dorlag, what's going on? 
I'm doing well, feeling better. Did Reggie McKenzie resign? I don't think he did. Uh, well, I don't know. I've been, I've been dead to the world for a couple days, so unless that news came out yesterday. I don't think Reggie McKenzie's done. Not anytime soon. I think Reggie McKenzie has has a handful of years left him. He'll at least see it through to Vegas. Yeah, Jeff, throw that. Your Yankees are playing some good baseball. <coughs> are playing some good baseball. I think they beat. Will they beat the Astros again today? All right, just a few boxes to go. I think I got our break kind of, kind of back on schedule. This is about the usual time that it takes. Just talking about Bryce Harper a few moments ago. He's going to get paid a lot. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of, lot of pay. Raiders are going to have a lot of uh, payroll issues coming up. they got to figure out how to pay Cleo Mack at some point. I mean, it's going to be interesting. They probably will franchise him. At least for a, a, for a year or so. There's Corey Ray to 499 But I can't imagine them, you know, unless Cleo Mack, like, significantly regresses this season, which I don't think he will, as long as he plays up to par, at least. You got to think that they're not letting him go anywhere. Is that Red Shimmer coming up? Behind Omar Mazzara is Dane Dunning. White Sox is Dane Dunning, one out of five Red Shimmer. Who has the white? EA, it's in the game with the White Sox. There you go. The Nationals first round pick, late first round pick back in 2016, so... Oh, yeah, they got him in the Adam Eaton trade. That's what it was. There you go, EA. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! It's a couple nice uh, out of fives popping out of this case. Two train whistles out of the case. I'll take that. It's hard to get train whistles out of products like this. So I've not seen the autograph yet. And Hunter Green. Wow. Great Hunter Green blue autograph for the Reds. Tyler T. There you go, Tyler. That's a that's a nice one. 59 out of 150 for last year's second overall pick. Oh, went to the same high school as Giancarlo Stan. That's right. I keep forgetting that he's a he's an LA guy. We met Hunter Green uh, at the Tops Industry Conference. Thanks to Tops for setting that up. He was really nice. Really cool. Very, very well spoken. Scouting report seems to suggest that not only are his talents for real, but that uh, he's got the personality to be a uh, to be a star in the league as well. I think he's he's a two way player too, like this guy. 
but I think the Reds' plans are to keep him as a pitcher. He's a shortstop and pitcher. And I actually brought that up to him, and he said, well, the Reds, he's, he said, we'll see what happens. I think he sounded like he wanted to play both positions, but I think the Reds want him as a pitcher. There's Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie's heating up, too. He had a cold start to the season, but heating up as well, 306, 5, 499. I always dreams of, have dreams of Goldschmidt, uh, who's on my fantasy team, hitting like 300, and I think he could be a 30-30 guy. He's got the speed for it. He certainly has the power. But I think he could, he could put together a 30-30 season. Anyhow, the Hunter, Hunter Green, they said they're probably going to move him to keep him at pitching. But people were saying that... So this is a nice box right here, actually. Red, White Sox, and then Blue Reds. I think I was reading that Hunter Green, who's on the cover of the box right here, uh, Hunter Green, scouts are saying, if he wanted to play, like was committed to playing shortstop or middle infielder somewhere around there, he still would have been drafted like mid to late first round. That's how good he is. And just as a pitcher, I mean, that's what got, what got him drafted second overall. So that's a pretty, pretty talented kid. All right, last two boxes. Good luck, everybody. Here we go. The uh, Blue Jays did end up winning that, that game that was in extra innings. It went 11. They won 13-11. And now their double header, I think, is just starting, which is crazy. It's a long, a long day for a long day at the office for those guys. Red Sox Rangers just started, and Twins White Sox just started. O's Angels tonight, and uh, A's Mariners tonight. What's the story with Otani, you guys? Is he still nursing that ankle? What's his next start? We got, I think Jaime Berea is on the mound for the Angels tonight. Yeah, I think Hunter Green is considered a five-tool guy, right? Like a classic five-tool guy. Acuna, I think, too, classic five-tool guy. You guys know what the five tools are? I, 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 I keep forgetting. Oh, he's a DH tonight, pitching on the weekend, so his ankle's okay. The five tools are, are hits, right? Hitting. I think speed, power, and I think it's defense and arm, which are, I guess, two different things. It's, I mean, they are. Defense and arm strength. So you can have a cannon for an arm, but just be a bad defender. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think those are your five tools. All right, second to last box. We are almost there, folks. Good luck. I think your classic five-tool player, right, just like of all time, would be like a Willie Mays type player, right? That's your classic five-tool player. He can hit for average, hit for power, can run the bases, steal the bases, play defense, and have a cannon for an arm. Those, 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 that pretty much gives you the one of the best all-around players there. And like, like the the stats to bear it out. You know what I mean? In terms of like the best, some people could have all five tools, but you know they might not be hitting like. That many home runs a year or whatever. Josh Lowe, I think no relation to Derek Lowe. Out of 499, that goes to the Rays. That'll be for Rich. There's Verdugo, who's in the action with the Dodgers. Dust off your Verdugo autographs, folks. I think it could be. Could be a surprise player, sleeper pick for the rookie of the year this year. There's Ton. Remember Ton from the Mariners? He's on the Cardinals now. And there's Christian Pash. 
It's another big name coming up the Braves farm system. Rich, with this Christian here. There you go, Mr. Hustle. Walker Bueller. They may, they may blow that innings count that they have for Walker Bueller this year. It's a possibility. There's Jemai Jones to 150. There he is, Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna Jr., if you want to be specific. This will go to the, to Vanos and the Angels, of course. So Otani as well, Otani paper. Is that, is that Otani paper still selling for like 10 bucks a pop on the bay? Someone was telling, telling me, yeah, he's still selling for like 10 or 15 bucks a pop. I thought that that was the, I thought that was the Bowman just came out price. You know what I mean? I think it was like, I think the Bowman came up, came out price was like 15, 20 bucks maybe. Oh, so it's less than that. Okay. I, I knew that. I was like, that price has to normalize. That's kind of crazy. I mean, I know his autographs are still going to go for bananas prices, but I was like, that paper price has to go down. <laughs> that paper price has to go There's just too much of it. I, I couldn't imagine it would sustain at that price. But hey, even if you're getting like five bucks a card, I'll take that. Where are all these cards here? All right, and there is Brian Miller out of 125 for the Marlins. That's the Marlins. That'll go to Brad with the Marlins-Pirates combo. All right, last box. We did it. Am I on time? I am on time. That's pretty good. The hobby does take about an hour 30 for me. Jumbo t is a lot shorter. Jumbo takes me about an hour 15, hour 10. Just too many packs in the hobby. And the, and the card pattern is different. That's what, that's, what, that's what gets me. All right. Last box. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. We'll take a quick break after this. Take a quick fiver. And then we will jump back into um, the pick your teams. So I know that the uh, the random the spot random for the Angels and Bowman pick your team already sold out. So we'll be doing that. Then the one box break of tribute that accompanies that. And the pick your team should be sold out by now. It is okay. Great. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll drop an updated schedule into the chat just so you can time your evenings as well around some of these longer breaks. But I think that's that. That actually might be it for the longer breaks. Just the hobby, and then the jumbo after this, which is actually great. I think sometimes when we do a long break in the middle of like during the prime time hours of the show, it, sometimes you lose people, and then they're like, "Oh, we'll go check back in later." And then they end up, end up getting caught watching, you know, Lethal Weapon on TV. I don't know what people watch. You know, what's on on a Thursday night? They watch end up watching Friends and Seinfeld on Thursday night. And that distracts them from uh, from coming back to break. But to get these knocked out early in the day is good. It's nice to kind of get a nice foundation in place. Then we can start building on top of these breaks. 
lot of new stuff on the site. I think a fun thing we could we could keep chipping away at tonight, and maybe even break later tonight, would be that NT uh, that NT football we just. Uh, got some more of and we added to the site. So football fans, I know we were talking a little football earlier. If you're into that football, we've got NT, the latest NT football on the site now. Also have a football mixer. And if you want the other football, we've got some soccer on the site too. Prism World Cup soccer just came out. Uh, so we should be seeing, that should be heating up too as we get closer and closer to the World Cup. Another, another month or so. And we get World Cup right on top of us, which will be crazy. My club, Liverpool, are in the Champions League final, which I'm excited about. So that should be fun. It's in Kiev, in the Ukraine, so I don't think I'll be making my way to that one. But that should be exciting. They'll be playing Real Madrid. And a lot of those big-name players on, that, on those clubs will be found in Prism World Cup, which should be... Which, once the World Cup starts, the values of those cards start to skyrocket. It's like March Madness for the world. It's a month of just soccer insanity. Although the hours are weird. It's in Russia, the World Cup. So if you remember, if you remember your Sochi Olympics... That'll kind of be what the times are for that if you want to watch stuff live. I think it's all weird. Very, It's either, it ranges from like 3 a.m. my time to 6 a.m. my time. I think the latest, like the night games are maybe 9 a.m. my time. So a lot of the stuff will fall between, for the East Coasters, morning, 6 a.m. to like 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's kind of a weird schedule. But we'll adjust. Nice orange, Leody Tavares. Love this orange. Twenty-three out of twenty-five. Uh, that goes to the Rangers, which we don't have on the list. So that's a nice one for the for the bonus card pile. Winner take all. We'll do that randomizer as soon as this break uh, this break is over. James Nelson Atomic, and I'm sure there's other Chrome cards that we miss. So it's like whoever gets that stack right there will be getting all the other. Chrome cards associated with it too. So a little little bonus pile of cards to somebody at the end of the break. So it looks like we have some more orange coming up too. Is that the autograph? Is the autograph gonna be orange? That would be cool. Uh, no, it looks like paper, but it's Jose Barrios, 12 out of 25. He's actually having a good season. That goes to the Twins as for DMAC with the out of 25 Barrios. Are you the autograph? No, Pedro Avila Blue Shimmer is not your autograph out of 150, 39 out of 150. That'll go to, that's another one for Anthony and the Padres. Is this it? No, that's Jordan Humphreys. Paper to four ninety nine For the Mets, that'll be for Brad Davis. Wait, did we? No, no, right? No autograph yet. Must be here. Did I miss it? No, oh, there it is. Got worried. Jojo Romero for the Phillies. Jojo going to Tyler T and the Phils. There you have it, folks. That is your break. Couple train whistles in this break too, so that was a nice one. Nice case. Hopefully that trend will continue in the Bowman case, the Bowman Jumbo case, which is coming up soon after this. Let's randomize these guys here. Here are the hits from this box. Thanks, everybody. That was random team five. Random team six 
is in the store now. So get into that random team six. Now let me set up the randomizer for this one. Okay, so let's go back to the list. So everybody gets a shot from Sherry down to Giuseppe. Let's get your names in here. And let's randomize that list five times, two and a three. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. Name on top is Josh Proust. So Josh, you will get these extra cards. You've got a nice orange right here out of 25, Mazzara and Lindor gold paper out of 50. Some bonus cards for you. And there you have it, folks. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for breaking with me. We'll be back. jazbeeshobbyland.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.